Welcome everybody to Unfiltered. Welcome, Pastor David. Thank you, John. Yesterday in the news, Pastor came across something uh, pretty alarming, at least for me, and, and it's called the Sparkle Creed. And I was asking you earlier about the Apostles' Creed, mm -hmm. and you were able to recite it, boom, 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 boom. Somewhat. And it's probably been many years. It's been a while. But the Sparkle Creed is a uh, modified version of the Apostles' Creed for the LBGTQ community that, w that is uh, all-inclusive. Here's a little bit about what it says, and I have a question with this. I believe in the non-binary God whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads and saw everyone as a sibling child of God. I believe in the rainbow spirit who shatters our image of one white light and refracts it into a rainbow of gorgeous diversity. I believe in the church of the everyday saints as numerous, creative, and resilient as patches on the AIDS quilt, whose feet are grounded in mud and whose eyes gaze at the stars in wonder. I believe in the calling to teach to each of us that love is love is love. So be love, let us love. I believe, glorious God, help my unbelief, amen. <laughs> we hear this and my question is, these are people that call themselves Christians. So how does Romans chapter 1 tie into this? How does John 14, 6 tie into this? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And how does the doctrine of the Holy Spirit tie into this Christian group? How does anything in the Bible tie into this is probably the right way to put it. It's quite obvious that this is just another one of the demonic spirits move to, uh, to eviscerate the power of the gospel by changing it, transforming it into a message that is inclusive of everything, including sin, including unrepentant people who, who perform uh, acts of sexual deviancy that are forbidden by God. So this is one of those things, I think, uh, John, that is simply another, um, another picture of the perversity, if you will, and the sacrilegious and blasphemous attitude that many have who are portraying themselves as Christians. They're, they're not Christians. They're unrepentant uh, sexual deviants. That's what they are. So there's really no question. And so to take the Apostles' Creed, a declaration of faith that was utilized and has been utilized over the centuries, as an apologetic presentation of who our God is, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and all of that, to take a declaration of faith and to pervert it, to include a radical rejection of God is modern Baalism. It's modern uh, paganism just, just dressed up in in uh, spiritual or religious words. So I don't see any reason why it's alarming or should be alarming. It's very, very on its, on its face, openly, uh, Christ rejecting, God rejecting, Bible rejecting. It's just a, uh, another attempt to diminish the holiness and majesty and power and purity of our God and to transform him into an all-accepting grandfather who simply smiles at his twisted little perverted children, grandchildren, if you will, and, and with a smile just accepts all their behavior and then welcomes them into paradise. It's just, it's just disgusting. What else can I say? But when you think about this denomination that call themselves Christians, Christians are Christ-like. And Christ-like comes from reading the Word of God and getting into God's Word. And, and uh, does, does this answer the question that people aren't in God's Word? Oh, or does of course, it... John. Yeah, of course. Of, of course this does. It, I mean, this is so ridiculous. Any thinking Christian would see it for what it, for what it is. And even, even pagans who have rejected Christ or... Even those who were raised in a generation that actually believed that there was such a thing as a God, and many of the 
people of my generation were raised with that concept, they immediately will see it for what it is. It, it, I, I don't even, it's so shallow and so, so offensive that it's very difficult that such a thing will catch traction. It's going to be something that is um, spoken in flamboyantly homosexual congregations and is going to be accepted only by those whose minds have been so twisted that they think that actually reflects upon a holy God who sent his precious son to die on the cross. I mean, the things that you said, I almost asked you to stop reading, John, uh, to read the whole thing was, it was a little too much for me. It's so blasphemous and it's so ridiculous and on, on, on just looking at it for what it is. It's just, again, it's a demonic spirit that is as ancient as Satan himself that has uh, intruded upon the righteous majesty of a holy and pure God who created man in his image. So to describe Jesus as wearing a fabulous tunic or whatever, it just makes me want to vomit. I, I don't have another word for it. It's, it's disgusting. And... Uh, it just, again, John, it just shows how lost our society is. Yes. It's sad. It really is sad. There's and a sadness to it, and there's also a provocation to it. It provokes people like me who have for 50-plus years followed this beautiful and loving Savior to see these flamboyant perverts, and that's really what they are. Somebody says, oh, you're being harsh. No, in Scripture, they're referred to as perverted persons. That's a scriptural term. So to see the perversion of these who are rejecting and not only that, encouraging people to go to hell by training them to think that they can go to heaven in their sexual immorality and their perverted state, is, it's, it, that's heartbreaking. But it's also, to me, it's anger-provoking, John. It... it it hits a nerve. It's like those homosexuals who were parading in the streets saying they're here and they're queer and they're after our children. There are too many of us who would say, no, over my dead body you get my children or my grandchildren. But see, they get away with it because they present themselves as, as free and liberal and, and loving and we're the harsh ones who reject them. No, no, you've... You, those kinds of things are drawing battle lines. And no, the church won't be quiet about that. I won't be quiet about that. I'm not being quiet right now because that's wrong. It's just wrong. It's encouraging. If there's an encouraging side, encouraging side to it, it's to, uh, to stay in our word, to stay guarded. And to speak up. And to speak up. That, that's the thing that we, we, it just can't be any quiet and passive. No. No, you can't. You can't be passive in the in the face of this. It's like this, this is crossing a line, and I believe that we as Christians, without uh, coming on, you know, as angry as our hearts may be over it, they are lost, and and all, but they've gotten to a point where they think they can get away with whatever they want to get away with, and and I'm telling you that. Uh, not everybody has self-control, and not everybody is a Christian, and not everybody is capable of seeing the lostness and having compassion. I fear for these people because, John, I, I believe they're moving into an arena that is going to have a, a backlash. There are those who are saying that, that this is getting to the point of it, it's potentially going to cause some, some physical reactions. I, I won't be surprised if they do. I'm not asking for that. I certainly don't want that. But I won't be surprised when that does happen. I just won't. You, you, they've gotten to the point in this perversion that people are going to say no, no more. And I, I, just, I, I, just pray that, I just pray that doesn't happen. I'm concerned that it will. And for and to pray for them, they're lost. 
Yeah. Pray for their salvation. Of God open their hearts. So, of course. Pastor, thank you so much. Uh, and I know this is a, a a somber topic, yet it's out there and it's in our faces and it's in our children's faces and, and it's in the face of the church. And Well, John, one last thing and we'll close, of course. I'm sorry, but my sister, prior to coming to Faith in Christ, was going to a church that was called the Metropolitan Community Church. It was openly advertised as a as a church for homosexuals. And so she, wanting to know things of the Lord and all prior to her coming to faith in Christ, uh, went to this church and she told me, she said, you know, I went to church, but they're touching each other in, in church services. They're, they're, they're kissing during church services. She said, it's very disgusting. It's a disgusting place to be. So she says, I can't go to that place. I can't. And this was before she was saved. She, she wanted to know who God was. She wanted to and thinking that she was normal in the way that she was living, which she discovered that that isn't how God created her, she decided to go to church with her, her partner. And she said, I, I can't go to church. She said, this is the kind of place you don't want to be because of the immorality taking place there in the chairs or in the pews. And so, John, you know, disgust, it's a disgusting thing for people to try and pretend that they're living a, a holy and chaste life. Now, not every homosexual is is openly, you know, uh, offensive in the things that they do. They do things behind the closed doors and all of that. And, uh, you know, all of that. But um, there, there's a segment that's willing to march, like those men who recently were marching with no clothes in front of children. And you've got these, these terrible parents, terrible parents, who bring their children to watch men in their, in their BVDs twerking in front of the children. And we're talking about three-year-old and four-year-old and five-year-old children, John. And other men walking naked in front of them and, and exposing themselves and, and things of that nature in public. That's where we've gotten. And I'm telling you, it's gotten to the point where people are saying, your quote-unquote freedoms are now infringing on my right to raise my children, not being violated by the disgusting, perverse behaviors that you want to normalize. I'm telling you, it, it, uh, parents are already starting to rise up. Parents are already saying, not my children. And, and unless, unless there are laws being enforced, which they're on the books, unless those laws become enforced, you're going to see a problem, I guarantee you, and it's starting. We'll see what happens, but... Again, yes, we pray for them, but we also act. Yes. And I think we have laws that we should be um, enforcing and we should be making our, our feelings known. And, and I, for one, and you, I know, uh, I'm more than willing to make my feelings known. And should that situation happen in front of me, I am more than willing to, to do what I have to do and take what I will receive. We have to, John, and that's enough of that. Yeah, this is one of those subjects that, that got me upset. Well, guys, thank you for tuning in. Do want to invite you to our Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 10.45, uh, Acts chapter 4. four. Uh, again, and then this Wednesday coming up, we have the Katinas come in mm -hmm. and join us. Yeah. Uh, it's always a great time to come out and join us for worship as they will uh, be doing the entire service yep. at Wednesday. Invite your friends and family. And then we have uh, summer baptisms coming up at the end of July. So we have a lot of great things uh, happening that are here. Come, and jo come join us and, and invite your friends and family to join us. Pastor, thank you again so much. All right, thanks for provoking me. <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in and God bless you.